So, um, our team is the, the table back there uh, where the Victoria Park Massive. So, uh, <laughs> th thanks to Kate, Gang, Ben, and Ollie for their contributions to our project. Um, my name's Mithun. I'm a, a GP. I work at the university based uh, health centre here in Leicester. The, the wider theme for our project this weekend was improving the experience of patients new to the NHS in Leicester. But to, to keep it uh, more specific, attainable, as something I can take away and implement from the weekend, we're focusing on the pre-registration and education for international students new to Leicester University. Thanks. Next slide, please. I think Chris Whitty as well. <laughs> So, uh, to define the, the problem, this is a real-world problem I see day-to-day -day in, the, in the clinic. I'm, I'm hoping that won't be me in a few years, but the, the problem I'm experiencing is we, we may have an international student come into a GP clinic. This student will not have in place an existing electronic patient record. They may come to see me with a problem, they've run out of tablets, they will come with a box of medication in a language I don't understand, possibly paper reports from their home country, information on their mobile phone, they may be calling home during the appointment to get some necessary information. Ultimately, it's not the experience I want to give to the patient, and it's a poor outcome for the patient and an inefficient use of services. I, I believe things can be done better through, through digital technology and better process and workflow. So what, what's the, the scale of the problem? About 20,000 students at the University of Leicester. Every year there are about 4,000 new students of which 20 to 30 percent will be international students from over 70 countries. Our practice will receive possibly 400 registrations from international students during Freshers Week. The type of information they receive prior to coming, I believe, is it's a little bit, bit lacking and vague. There is advice there about registering with the doctor, bringing your medication along, and a few links for, for their information. So th this is all about uh, improving uh, equity and equal healthcare access. Uh, a student who is moving into Leicester, who's from the UK, will have an electronic patient record. They'll be aware of the services they can access. Language is not an issue for them, and they have a wider support network they can access. International students lose these advantages. So what, our, what the Victoria Park Massive is proposing is an improved equity of access. It's all about improved experience of NHS care for those who are entitled to it. This is a poster right from the inception of the NHS and it shows the, the family doctor is the key point for access to wider NHS services and we can only do that if we have a good patient record. We want to improve the efficiency and productivity of the patient process and also achieve a digi digitization of records because that will be of more benefit to all the patients. So we, we started by process mapping the existing registration process for international students. It's, it's quite small to read, but I'll talk you through it. The student might receive some information in their home country, but it's when they arrive to the UK, they may be captured at the Freshers' Fair or through promotion. This will generate the NHS number and a GP registration. At this point, if we're aware of any problems, or potential issues, they may have an onboarding phone call with our practice pharmacist 
at any point they're likely to attend the A and E in Leicester for a non emergency problem. Sometimes they go through the registration process but still come to the GP at the last minute to sort out any preventable problems. This is what we were trying to envision where we want to go. I'd like the international students to receive good quality information in their home country prior to entering the UK have the ability to pre-register their information before arriving to the UK. When they do, they can contact us, or the practice contacts the students who register, generate the NHS number, we marry up the information, we can virtually onboard the patient with the right records, bring in all the information, have the electronic health record and an appropriate NHS contact when it's needed. We can also use the coded data in better ways. So the, the types of challenges we, we experienced during our brainstorming um, included how do we reach the right audience? These are international students. How do we capture the right data, medical records which are on bits of paper, family histories, which the patients know personally. The data's in different forms. Some issues around storage of data, GDPR. What digital tools can the team come up with to help tackle the problem? And a little bit about stakeholder engagement, getting the right people on board. So some of the things that we've, we've come out with from the, from the weekend. We have created a, a new web page for the, for the practice to give some good quality information specific to our health centre and the Leicester NHS to the students. I'm going to, I've actually given you a good few minutes extra. <laughs> um, what, what, but, but, what was the time but, limit? <laughs> there was a time limit! There was, oh this is good. I like your style, I like your style. <laughs> So we can fly through to the end. <laughs> well, I've given you. Slides you want us to quickly you've given you eight minutes you. now. So, is there anything that you want to be able to? Thanks. Just in general, whenever you're doing it, if you've got the thing, you want to show the thing. But the judges, I'm sure, do want to know more about what you're doing. So, just we'll we'll let you go on a little bit. But just everybody else, okay. we know we've had a few hiccups. Okay. Just be aware of this. Okay. So, we have the web page. We have a. A, f a form tool that will collect the data. Next slide. So. You could always blame the operator, yes. I we, guess. I've yeah. you dying. We, we, we have a series of videos to help onboard the patients understand the NHS services better. <laughs> Impressive. Okay. We can, let's go past the video. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Oh, yeah. So we have some promotional materials for the students. We have identified how to embed a tool to translate some of these materials into any language the student may need. And moving forward with our project, I have identified how we can use the, the code, the patient data to go to an external company to use AI to code it into a format that's more usable in the NHS. We hope to use it at a wider scale, for example, at other universities or for other patient groups like um, immigrant populations. Thank you. Brilliant. So, our judges, you get first chance to ask any questions. One of the forms that uh, you mentioned, you, you asked for, for them to um, choose the GP. Do they have information as to how they choose that GP? Because they'll, they will be unfamiliar with the geography, etc. So do they get help with that? I guess that's particularly relevant since you're now doing it from another country. 
it is. I think uh, you know, a fair and equitable access is important, so we, we can't insist the patient uses one provider or our practice. I do believe it's a good option for them. At the moment, the university gives the link to our practices website alongside a link to the wider NHS website which can help the patient choose a different practice should they wish for that. We, we are hoping to give some local information on our local chemists and services so they can have some information specific to the area around the university. Thank you for your presentation. Um, in the ASIS process map, you referred to the number of patients that were attending a &E. So in your to be process, how many patients do you feel would be reduced in terms of attending a &E by the new process? questions about A&E &A attendances, I think there's a, a little bit of work to do there to separate, separate <coughs> appropriate A&E attend attendances from preventable <coughs> or inappropriate attendances. Um, I, I don't have an exact figure from that. Um, from my experience as a full-time working GP, I see it going through my clinic probably three or four per week and if we extrapolate that to 16 GPs working at the practices that's just a significant amount amount of preventable A and E attendances. Thank you. Thank you. Any other burning questions from yep yeah, Matt? Hopefully not burning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'm really pleased to see um, that you've come up with a range of solutions, not just not just focusing on very technical things, but you've got some good stuff around communication there as well. Is there anything that you have worked on this weekend that you feel tomorrow you could go into your day job and say, actually, I could start to try and use some of this? One of the main things for me was this project is something that's achievable and I, I will implement this at the practice. The, the changes to the website I can make right away. We've identified some of our more technical solutions. Our existing providers are well placed to make the changes. For example, there's an external company that makes the registration form for UK registrants. Their form is based on the premise the patient's local. It does a postcode check for the very first step of the form. Yeah. These patients don't have a postcode, but we know they are coming in. We can work with them to reformat the existing processes. Thank you. That's a great answer. Oh, okay. Yes. I would like to ask about how these international students um, be able to integrate into the registration because myself is an international recruit. So we have that BRP which we have ourselves registered to the home office and then we need that to register into our GP <laughs> services. How would that be bridged out to that with the, with the resolution? Because I believe international students needed to have this visa here, right? Coming into the country. So is that something you've considered, yes. how this works with the registration? I think yeah. Uh -huh. My understanding was you said that you were considering an alternative process around this. Yeah, so we, we had some discussions, I think. This is something Ollie was particularly keen to propose a solution for. And we, we want to avoid duplication of data at different stages. And potentially for future work, there will be an option where the patient goes through the, the immigration process at which point to be fair they are paying a healthcare fee for the duration of their visa and if we can tie that into the GP registration process it would be a better patient journey it's a it's a larger piece of work perhaps if we can make this work at a smaller scale there can be a proposal to tie things up with the larger national processes great Thank you. I think we've probably got about time for one question from any of the other participants. Yeah. 
Anyway, yep. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.